Aberdeen Standard Investments is a, a world-class, global, diversified asset management firm, uh, one of the largest asset management firms in Europe. Uh, we have around about 1,000 investment professionals across 50 offices around the world uh, and clients in around 80 countries around the world. Uh, we have broad, deep skills in equities, fixed income, real estate, uh, multi-asset and solutions investing, uh, as well as a range of alternatives. So at Aberdeen Standard Investments, we have a very collegiate approach to the way that investment funds are managed. Um, we don't believe in star portfolio managers, so it is a very team-based approach. Uh, remuneration is a mix of annual base salary plus bonus. Uh, this is very subjective or qualitative in the way it's determined. Uh, it isn't formulaic, and we believe having that more qualitative approach to remuneration uh, creates a better environment within the team and therefore better investment outcomes for our investors. Uh, the formal investment objective of the fund is to provide high capital growth over the medium to long term. Uh, we think this objective is far more aligned to what the average mum and dad investor is trying to achieve, uh, where they're trying to uh, you know, build their wealth in order to fund their retirement. So the objective is deliberately uh, benchmark unaware, benchmark agnostic. Uh, but informally, internally, we also aim to outperform the benchmark as well. Uh, and that objective is to um, outperform by around about 3% per annum over rolling three to five year periods, and that's before fees. So our investment philosophy believes that markets are inefficient and that superior returns can be achieved by holding uh, high quality businesses at reasonable valuations. And so that forms the, the core of our investment philosophy. Uh, beyond that, we believe that um, you know, benchmark unaware returns are far more important to the average investor, and that, that's a core uh, cornerstone of the way we invest also. We have a very uh, research intensive bottom up stock selection process. Um, we have relatively large, stable investment teams on the ground in these countries and regions around the world. Uh, and our investment process is really three-stepped. Three uh, the first is to um, analyse almost all companies within the universe uh, and assess them on a quality basis. And that really becomes a, a pass and fail uh, filter for us. So um, the different measures we, we hold close in terms of defining quality uh, are things like the quality of the, the management team, um, the clarity of the, the business strategy, uh, and ensuring that the financial financials are also quite sound. So we look, we look for, we typically look for lowly geared balance sheets. Um, once a company passes that initial quality filter, uh, we then conduct a whole range of valuation uh, measures on that company. Uh, things like price earnings, uh, you know, dividend yields, other valuation measures such as those. And really apply those pragmatically for the individual um, circumstances of that, of that company, of that sector and of that country. Once we have that relatively high quality subset and put those companies through that valuation process, um, we then look to portfolio construct in a relatively benchmark unaware approach. Uh, so we don't start with benchmark weights in terms of stock, country or region. Uh, we start with a blank sheet of paper and really looking for 40 to 50 um, you know, high quality names uh, that aren't trading at, at expensive multiples uh, and trying to ensure that they're, they're diversified across sector, country and also theme in a more absolute way. Meeting management of an, of an investee company is really important to us. We wouldn't invest in a company without having met management at least once or twice. Uh, and there's many examples where we've met management 10 or 20 times before we've actually made an investment in that company. Uh, really, it's, a, it's an important part of our quality step in, in the process, understanding the quality uh, of the people involved at a management level, but also at a board level. Uh, and that's something we hold quite close to our hearts in terms of assessing companies, is having that uh, faith in those people managing these businesses for us. Yeah, historically Asia has been a very volatile uh, region of the world in which to invest. Uh, most of Asia historically has been um, not developed, so developing uh, or emerging. Uh, and that brings with it a whole bunch of political, um, uh, you know, social, economic uh, uncertainties. Uh, where we are today in the world, Asia is probably the most developed it's ever been. Uh, countries like China have come a long way in the last 10 or 15 years. Uh, you've got countries like Singapore and Hong Kong who are developed markets. Uh, and who are sort of the centre of the free capital market system within Asia. Um, but volatility remains. Uh, there's no way of escaping that. Um, however, on balance, we believe that investors looking to, uh, to invest in Asian equities are being rewarded for those risks. So Japan is excluded from our Asia exposure. It's really a, an industry thing. Uh, I guess when we go back to the period of the 1980s when a lot of the Asian indices were first developed, uh, Japan was such a significant part of the Asian region back then uh, that the rest of the region would have been a relatively small part of the index. And so the indice providers back at that point decided to, um, to create mostly indices that were ex-Japan. And that's just become um, 
you know, industry convention in, in Australia in particular. And so it's not an Aberdeen standard investments decision as such, it's more just uh, an, an industry standard. Well, the benefits of investing in Asia are quite broad. Uh, it really is the Asian century. We've all heard that term over the last decade or so. Uh, but Asia really is the fastest growing region globally. Uh, that's going to be a multi-decade theme. We don't think it's a, a, a short-term phenomena. Uh, you think about what's happened in places like China over the last 10 or 15 years. They've had uh, very rapid econo economic expansion. Uh, that's also now starting in places like India and Indonesia as well. Uh, countries with large populations um, who have you know, hard-working young populations who are good savers uh, and who are aspiring to a, a better way of life. Uh, you know, the lifestyles that we all take for granted in the Western world, uh, you know, aspiring to that is a very strong motivator for many of these nations. Uh, coupled with uh, you know, strong exports to other parts of the world, um, we really believe that Asia is a phenomenal growth story for the next 10, 20 years and beyond.